Hey everybody, it's Brian. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and healthy uh, during these kind of bizarre times. Um, but what I wanted to do today was give you some uh, thoughts and uh, conversation around uh, what we see happening in the market and answer the question that we got most over the last couple weeks, which is why is this market up so much over the last couple of weeks? And so I want to make sure I address that. Um, so we're going to do it for two phases. Number one, we're going to look at sort of, sort of a good and bad approach. Um, we're going to talk more about the bad first because we want to end this message on a more positive note and talk about the good things that we're seeing. So let's look at kind of what's happening in the market, uh, what we see, what we think, and this is really driving how we are managing these portfolios. So number one, when you look at the markets, um, from January 1 until the low, which was uh, the low point, uh, which the S and this is on the S&P 500, was on uh, March 23rd. The S&P 500 was down 31% from January 1st. If you look at the all-time high, which was on January 22nd, uh, the S&P was down about 33%. And so that's a pretty significant pullback. But the most interesting part of that is the market has actually rallied since that March 23rd low, and it's actually up almost 30% uh, since that low on March 23rd. And that's the question we've been getting most from clients is why is that happening and what's causing it? So that's what we want to address. So let's look at really what drives the market. There's two things that fundamentally drive the market, data and emotions. That's it. Um, we're going to talk about the data part. The emotional part, I believe that's what's driving this market right now. And it's the emotional part that we're going to talk about sort of at the end when we talk about uh, the good news. But it is about the markets are really ignoring all the data that's coming out right now. And they're looking for the positivity of uh, potentially having uh, a medication that might uh, lessen the impact of this virus. And so that's really what this market's trading on is the hope that that will happen. And number two, it's trading on the hope that when the markets reopen, well, I mean, when the economy reopens, and so, you know, we're getting soft opens in several states, even in Kentucky and Indiana, are kind of getting a soft open, but they're hoping that that soft open comes back sort of with a roar, and I don't believe that's going to happen, but that's the hope that this market's trading on, in my opinion. But let's go back and look at the data. That's the most important thing, and the one piece that I want to make sure that we uh, that we are evaluating, and it's probably the most important thing that we're evaluating for sure when it comes to how we're managing portfolios. So when you look at the markets, the markets, you guys have heard me say this over and over and over, um, there are lots of data points that drive the market, but I narrow them down to three main uh, categories. Number one, GDP growth. Number two, unemployment. And number three, earnings. Yeah, there's lots of other factors that drive it. But those are really what I would consider the three main core aspects of what drive a market. So let's look at GDP growth. GDP, GDP came out today. Uh, this is just in the month of March. was down 4.8%. The, the interesting thing about GDP growth is that January and February were great months. And so uh, March was really the only month where things were starting to shut down. So they were starting in the beginning of March and really ramped down uh, quite a bit throughout the month. The most interesting thing about GDP growth is going to be the number that comes out of second quarter, which won't be reported until, let's say, July, August for the entire quarter. Now, my guess is over the, the months of uh, uh, April, May, and June, we're going to get GDP numbers as sort of they roll out. But the interesting thing about GDP and why we're so interested in it is because we're hearing numbers that GDP growth, while we were used to seeing two and three percent GDP growth, and we were kind of humming along at about two, two and a half percent through January and February, which were that's ideal um, in my opinion for the for the economy to grow at kind of that two to three percent range. But they're saying now the estimates are coming out that we could see GDP growth in excess of negative. 10, 20, 30%, uh, which is staggering. Those are numbers that we've really never seen before. And in all honesty, uh, this, this you know, country has never seen a complete shutdown or for the most part a shutdown of the economy. Now there are certain businesses still open, of course, but, um, but for the most part, 
uh, the company, the economy's kind of been shut down. So we've never really seen this. So I think some of the estimates, you know, might be cut. That's why you're seeing them. They're all over the board because no one really knows how to predict them. Um, so we are closely monitoring GDP growth. Um, unemployment growth, unemployment rate, um, we've seen approaching 30 million unemployment claims. Now we do know that most of those, as I mentioned in previous videos, most of those are, are temporary. But the longer this goes on, the more likely that some of these, at, at the time when they uh, filed for unemployment claims, were going to be temporary, meaning I'm going to shut down my business for two, three, four weeks, but then I'm going to rehire. The likelihood of those companies not rehiring because there's not going to be this huge rush back into uh, demand of their product or service or whatever. It's going to be sort of a slow growth. So I think we're going to see the unemployment numbers not come back as quickly as maybe we thought, say, three weeks ago. And so it could be a longer climb out of this, uh, of this unemployment number to get back to where we are seeing positive uh, gains in, uh, in the uh, employment numbers. Now, the interesting thing we're going to watch is over the next, let's say, uh, through the month of May and even in the month of June, when we start to see these soft opens across, you know, the really outside of the East Coast and the West Coast is really where you're going to see the majority of them open. It's kind of the middle part of the country where you've seen less impact from the coronavirus. Um, it's going to be interesting to see when the numbers turn positive. So the unemployment numbers uh, start to diminish to the point to where we see more employment uh, gains than losses. That's going to be key because if it happens, let's say, in the month of June, then that gives us a telltale sign that the markets are headed in the right direction, the economy is headed in the right direction, and, uh, and the unemployment, I mean, people are, are being rehired, and that means we're getting back out, we're going and consuming products and consuming services, and these businesses are having to rehire at a quicker rate. That's a good thing, and that's one of the things that we're going to be watching. Um, but we've, uh, we won't see positive uh, unemployment numbers really until the end of May, 1st of June, we don't believe. So we're, again, watching that. But the interesting thing that is being thrown out, and you guys might see this number, is they're saying the unemployment could reach in excess of 40 to 45 million unemployment claims. If that happens, the percentage of unemployed, unemployed will exceed those of the Great Depression. I hope we don't get there. Uh, keep my fingers crossed that we don't. But if that happens, that could be an unbelievably staggering number that percentage-wise we have exceeded that of the Great Depression. Uh, again, hope it doesn't happen that way, but, uh, but we're closely monitoring that piece. Third, earnings. Uh, right now we're seeing earnings season. We're sort of in the beginning phases of it. Uh, it's, you know, we've got about three weeks really of earnings. Now they're coming out every day. And the interesting thing about them is they're not terrible. Uh, and that's mostly because January, February, again, were great months, and then we're getting into uh, uh, March, which was a bad month, and so that's really what's hurt earnings. So the interesting thing about earnings is we're really not going to see the impact of the shutdown until companies start to report in July and August. That's going to be the telltale sign of how these companies are actually going to survive, what their earnings look like, uh, over this past quarter, which is the second quarter. So we won't know any of that until, like I said, July or August. And that's going to be uh, the time period where we're going to make some decisions in these portfolios as to really what to do. Um, because we think the market, with all the negative data that's going to come out, the markets are going to pull back from where they are today. Uh, we're going to see we're going to see this market pull back. That's our opinion. That's our thoughts. And that's why uh, we've not done much with the cash position is because we're waiting for a more opportune time to buy back into the markets. So that being said, um, if we look at the overall data that's coming out of the markets, it's very negative, um, which should tell the markets to not be uh, have a positive upward momentum, which is what we're having. So that tells me that this upward momentum that we're seeing is purely emotionally based and not data driven. So uh, we're going to, again, closely monitor it. We may make some changes in these portfolios come middle of the summer, but for right now we're going to maintain our position 
and uh, we're going to monitor the data that comes out. And my guess is what they normally would do is uh, this data would come out every quarter, but because of the circumstances, they're going to report this data on a much more frequent basis. So uh, it's not going to be such a shock to the system if they reported, let's say, GDP growth uh, in July for the second quarter. They're not going to stun us like that. Uh, at least I don't believe so. They're going to give us revisions sort of along the way, uh, which again will help the markets sort of uh, absorb uh, these incredibly negative numbers. But again, I can't emphasize enough that when you look at the data that's going to come out about this market, it's, it's going to be unbelievably negative. And so we've got to position the portfolios to uh, affect those negative, uh, the, the negative data that's going to come out. And we believe we've done that. Um, now, unfortunately, this 30% run that we've seen in the market from the all-time low, we've missed out on some of that. We've captured some of it, but we've missed uh, a pretty good portion of it. Um, but with that being said, we really are, we are confident that we are going to get a pullback in the market. And that's why we've not made any other adjustments. Um, kind of tough to have that uh, conversation with a client. Hey, the market's up 30% from its all-time low, but uh, we missed out on some of that. Um, but we do believe that we are going to get another pullback in the market which is going to set these portfolios up to when we buy back in, which is where we're going to head to on the, when we get to the good, the good part of the conversation, when we start to buy back in the market, uh, we're going to have plenty of cash to be able to do that. So enough about all of that, because it's, it's going to be, it's going to be tough going for the next uh, couple of months for sure. Now the good news is, the good news is Gilead uh, Science came out today, uh, and today is the uh, 29th of, uh, of April. Came out this morning. Uh, they're in phase two of a of a trial on a particular drug that showed uh, positive results. So that's a good thing. That's kind of why the market's running today, and that's a good thing. Um, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't prevent it. This is not a, a prevention drug. This is not a vaccine or anything like that. What they're doing is they're saying if you have the virus and you come in, it is diminishing the impact of the virus, which is a good thing. And once that gets approved, that will give, hopefully give all of us the confidence to be able to go back out in public in larger masses, if you will, or more of us that would go out to say, hey, if you get uh, the virus, you can go into your local hospital and they're gonna be able to give you an IV. Uh, it is an IV form today. Uh, they're talking about potentially getting into a pill form, but it is IV, which, which means it had to be administered at a hospital. Uh, more than likely. Uh, now all the data is not out yet, but that's kind of the preliminary information we're getting. So that's a good news. That's, and we're going to see more and more over the next couple of months of companies that are testing different drugs. And hopefully, you know, we're getting more and more positive results and uh, we're going to have a multitude of, of uh, uh, you know, drugs or concoctions that will lessen the impact of this virus. That's a good news. That, that's one of the, the good pieces. The other uh, the other good uh, that has come out of, uh, of all this is the use of technology. You know, we see it in our business today. We're doing a lot of remote calls. We're also, uh, you know, I was on calls the other day with some friends of mine from college, and we kind of had a little happy hour. So I believe we're seeing that technology can be used in different ways to make us more efficient, uh, to keep us more in contact with family and friends and that sort of thing. So that's a good thing. I think at the end of the day, when we look back on it, we're going to say, yeah, the technology that was available while it was mostly used in the business world was more applicable to my private, the private world, if you will, or our private lives. And, uh, and I think that's a good thing that's going to come out of this. And the other thing I think that is going to come out of this in a positive manner is the fact that we're going to slow down a little bit. I know we're all used to kind of running and running and running, and I think we all had to kind of take a step back and say, you know what, we can't do that anymore, at least right now. And so I think uh, at the end of the day, the history books are going to show that I think everybody said, yep, there's some time to kind of sit back and, and, uh, and think about all the positive things in our life. I see that a lot being posted on LinkedIn and Facebook and all that, which is a good thing. But I think it did give us an opportunity or is giving us the opportunity just to kind of slow down a little bit and uh, take a big deep breath, which I think is a good thing. Um, the uh, last piece of good news uh, and I'm going to end on this, is that, yes, the economy has shut down, but the economy was very strong 
up until March. So that tells me that we weren't seeing, uh, we weren't seeing the economy slowing down. Um, in that case, we would have seen a, a more, uh, we would not see a more rapid uh, increase in the economy uh, later on when, when things get back open. So I believe what we're going to see is the economy was good until March. And then we kind of shut it all down all, you know, all at one time or phased it in over a couple of weeks. But I think what you're going to see is once we get uh, medications that's approved by the FDA and CDC and everybody says puts their stamp of approval on it and we're getting more towards a vaccine and you get these markets back open or get the economy back open and we get more retail back open and people feel better about getting out, I believe you're going to see the market uh, increase at a pretty good pace. Now, I don't believe we're going to get right back to where we were in the markets uh, anytime this year, but I believe it's going to be a slow, uh, a slower pace than maybe we had hoped, but it's not going to be a creepy crawly uh, pace. You know, I think we're going to eventually get there over the next couple of years back to where we were, um, but I don't think it's going to happen all in one month. Uh, maybe I thought that a couple of weeks ago, but now I think it's going to be a more gradual increase uh, as uh, retail gets back open and as we get more comfortable getting out into uh, to a, I guess, normal uh, way of life, if there is such a thing moving forward. Hopefully there is, but uh, that's kind of the way we see things. Anyway, that's kind of the good and bad for this week. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to give me a call. You can uh, right below this video uh, or right, uh, right below this message, you're going to see a link to my remote meetings. Uh, make sure you click on that if you want to talk. Uh, we've had lots and lots of meetings. They've all been good and positive, so uh, it's, uh, it's good. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to give us a call. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk soon.